Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be looking at a new indicator, the fair value. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Also check out the premium list if you want access to these indicators that we show on the channel. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, you're probably wondering, what I'm talking about, right? And remember, we have Bitcoin regression bands. And historically, when I talk about the fair value, I talk about the fair value with respect to the fit to quote unquote, non bubble data. So generally talking about this central green logarithmic regression line. Okay. Now, it begs the question, what about if you included more data? Okay, what if you included all the data rather than the somewhat subjective non-bubble data? Well, the two extremes so far that I've shown you are only including non-bubble data down here um, when I've you know deemed it sort of a, a long reaccumulation phase to these regions. And actually it was only fit up until this point here. Everything that you see past this point was fit and it did a pretty good job of, of showing more or less where that fair value was in the reaccumulation phase, okay? So the green line is great for showing what is the, you know, what is the main reaccumulation range in, in a bear market, right? In a, in a multi-year bear market slash reaccumulation phase. And then the red line shows a logarithmic regression fit to only three data points, right? One, two, and three. Now, a lot of people would very much like to take this red logarithmic regression line to the bank and cash it in. Unfortunately, we cannot do that because again, it's only fit to three data points. I have no idea how well it's going to fare. We came up to it back in April and May, um, February, March, April, and May, and then we ultimately dropped back down. We did not make it up to the top of the regression band. If we had, it would have corresponded to going to about $90,000. Now the upper part of the regression band is almost $106,000. But that brings me to my next point. What if we had one regression band that's similar to the series that we do called Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, where we, we actually include the entire cryptocurrency asset class. But what if we just included Bitcoin and, and did not include uh, every other coin that there is within the asset class? If you do that, you get something that looks like this. Okay, and this is an interesting indicator. Why? Well, it more or less just shows the fair value as fit to all data, right? Not just the non-bubble data, not just the peak data, but it's completely non-subjective uh, because we're not subjectively deciding what is bubble data, what is non-bubble data. We're also not included, or we're not excluding the peaks either. We're including everything and every data point is weighted that same percentage, right? I mean, every data point has the same weight. The, the regions down here will obviously ultimately weight, weight more towards the regression curve than this, the couple of data points you might have at a peak. But this is what you get. And this is an interesting indicator for a number of reasons. And, and we'll talk about why, right? We'll talk about why. The first thing to show is that during any market cycle in the past, any time that we fell below the yellow line, what it indicated was a fairly long reaccumulation range. I don't think we can say it, it, it indicated a, a bear market because by the time you get below the yellow line, you're almost you're not even that far away from from the from the from the low, right? I mean, you know, if you if you look at when we fell below this one. We, when, once we fell below it, it only took from the bottom of this line, it was only about two, two months or so. Now it was a 60% drop, but it was within two months. Um, so clearly this is not the best indicator for say a long bear market because you would want something that would tell you that up here, not after a lot of the drop is already in. Similarly, if you go look at this point here, the drop from that, from leaving it was about 50% more over the course of a month. And then this one here was about 44% more over the course of a little less than a month. So what it shows is that whenever we drop below it, 
the market cycle bottom tends to come in within, let's say, one to three months or so. Okay, within 90 days after going below the yellow fair value regression band, historically speaking, you get the market cycle bottom within 90 days. What's something else that we can learn from this? Well, something else we can learn is that dropping below it, as we said, indicates that the market cycle bottom is coming, but it also means that we're a ways off from a new all-time high, okay? For instance, once we dropped below it here, it took us about a year and a half to actually put in a new all-time high. Once we dropped below it here, and I'm talking about this all-time high up here, once we dropped below it there, it took about more than two years, right? More than two years, maybe about two and a half years before we put in an all-time high. And then once we dropped below it here, it took about two years. Again, about two years before we put in a new all-time high. So what it shows is that when you drop below it, forget all-time highs for a while, right? Buckle up because it's gonna be a couple years probably before Bitcoin's gonna be putting in new all-time highs. Well, what's something else we can learn from this indicator? Well, something else we can learn is that when we stay above it, like we did in 2013, it means that all-time highs are coming, okay? So, can we apply that to today, right? Can we apply it to today? Well, so far, we've managed to stay above it, okay? And if we zoom into 2013, if we actually say zoom all the way in, you can see that we came all the way down to the bottom of it, but we more or less picked ourselves up by our bootstraps and continued along the way. What is the lower bound today? What would it, what would it be if we, if, we, if we looked at it today? Well, today, the lower bound, which again is a tolerance on the fair value fit, I should say the fair value right now is just below $28,000. So hopefully we don't ever go below $28,000 again, um, but the, the tolerance we've applied says that as long as we don't go below $23,000, which seems kind of ridiculous considering how far, I mean, that's a 50% drop from here. As long as we don't go below $23,000, then we could still put in new all-time highs without having to wait a couple of years. Now, this is actually increasing every single day. So again, if you were to look at this fair value back in January, the fair value was around 20K, the lower bound was around 17. So 17 to 20K, it's about 18 to 19 months later, or sorry, about eight to nine months later, not 18 to 19, about eight to nine months. It's moved from 17 to 20, up to 23 to 27, okay? So by the end of the year, you know, the fair value is, is probably gonna be around 30K, maybe even a little bit higher, right? Somewhere around those, somewhere around those levels. So what it shows right now is that we actually have some wiggle room, right? We still have some wiggle room, even if we were to drop back down. If this indicator is, is at all supposed to be useful, then we could say, as long as we don't go below the fair value and go back into, say, the undervaluation region, which would be down here, as long as we don't go to that area, then all-time highs are likely not two to three years away, right? There, there's a, a higher chance that we can still continue to put in new all-time highs in 20, maybe in 2021, 2022, okay? So that's what we're looking at. So far, we actually did come back down to test it a little bit here when we went down to $28,000, $29,000. At the time, the fair value was just over 26K. We have tested it so far. We've held it as support. This line might also be useful when we are in the undervaluation phase to try to figure out, can we get into a new parabolic phase, okay? Price discovery mode. When we got above it over here, we were already in price discovery mode, but when, you, when, we, when we first tried to get above it here, and we got rejected, it meant more accumulation, right? We went up to it, the fair value, got rejected, more accumulation. Back in 2019, we went up to the top of it, got rejected, more accumulation, okay? Right now, we're above it. When we got rejected by it back in 2019, the upper bound on the fair value was only around 14K. The fair value at the time was around 9,600 or so. So you can see how quickly the times change. Remember, if you want this indicator, check out the premium list, which you can find a link to in the description below into the cryptoverse.com. And when you go to that site, it'll show you a little preview of what you will get by signing up. The trading view indicators are just one thing. 
Now, what happens if we overlay the fair value and the logarithmic regression bands? You get something that looks like this. And you might say, well, Ben, you know, it looks like the yellow line is actually trending towards the green one rather than the red one. Why is that? Wouldn't we like what we prefer for it to trend towards the red one? Well, it's not about what we would prefer. It's just taking into account the fact that we don't really spend a whole lot of time at these levels, whereas we do spend a lot of time down here in the, in the green band. So it, it makes sense that the yellow band would actually be trending towards the green one over the red one, since the data would be much more weighted towards the green band. Right now, they are still not, you know, they're, they're still not on top of, or they're, they're not the same values because the fair value according to the green band, which is only fit to non-bubble data, is right now, it's currently around just under $16,000, whereas the fair value fit to all data is just around, just below 28,000. So the difference again is, is around 16,000 versus 28,000 by including all data. So there are still some differences um, at the present time. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Hopefully Bitcoin is able to stay above the fair value so that we can continue to put in new all-time highs either this year and or going into 2022. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Also give the video a thumbs up if you like it and you want to see more content like this. I will see you next time. Bye.